Hey everyone, welcome to the Cast, episode 120. It's me, Tyler Oltoff, and Kyle. Hi, Kyle. Kyle Wakeling. That's him. <laughs> <laughs> Did it take you a minute to remember that, Tyler? Uh, maybe. Uh, so, I, I'm buzzed, people. So, just enjoy that. <laughs> so, I might say some weird stuff. I might be weird. I don't know. Slur his words, you know. Just normal things. <laughs> the usuals. Right? Yeah, it, for sure. <laughs> you know me. Still the same old G, but you've been low-key. <laughs> ah, look at you rhyming all the time. Men. <laughs> <laughs> I see we're off to a great start already. <laughs> we are. That's that's all it's about. That is... That is... No. Hold on. <laughs> that is that that's all it is about there we go nailed it <laughs> all right what was that i'm over here playing b that it took you so long like uh, shut up <laughs> all right this is the vita cast let's talk about the vita right that's what we do that sounds like a plan so we normally start with what we've been playing so kyle it's been a couple days what have you played um, well, I've been playing quite a bit. I played a whole bunch of Dead or Alive Extreme 3 Venus. Um, I think I've finally got enough to actually be able to put this review out, so I've got that mostly written. Um, not quite happy with it yet, so we'll see how that goes, but E3 has kept me busy, and all this crazy news stuff has kept me busy, so, you know, time kind of escapes from me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. So that'll be coming in soon. Um, I also did a video uh, introduction to Dead or Alive Extreme 3 Venus that's up on the channel. So if you want to take a look at that, it'll tell you all about the game. Um, yeah, I've talked about it before. It's awesome. It kind of pisses me off that they put these modes kind of way up there in the level cap kind of thing. Um, but whatever. Yeah. I don't know. I'm having fun with it. More beach volleyball. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, I played some Sandman Kagura Estival Versus. Um, I did, I, I think, I, the Katsuragi missions and something else, just to kind of go over them again. I think I might do um, not a Let's Play, but just like random picks of like the girls' stories just here and there. But I don't know, thinking about it. Um, also, I played some Bullet Girls 2, uh, which is very interesting. Um, there's this girl on there that has, like, a sweet-ass sword, and you can, like, shoot the hell out of people and then cut them with sword, and all their clothes go off. So it's very Senran girl like only with guns. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's interesting, and I've been enjoying it so far, although I will note that since it's an import title, I have been having problems with, uh, like, what to do in the levels. I actually had to look up a guide, but somebody wrote out a sweet one. So, yeah, I've been doing okay. Um, <laughs> and also, I just started playing Odin Sphere Lethros here. Um, I was having a problem getting money into my account, but now I've fixed that, and the money finally got here by Camel or something, and then uh, now I have the game. So I played through uh, to the first, like, actual level boss. So I beat him, and yeah, I'm liking it so far. Excited to finally have it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it for Vita. What about you, Tyler? Hmm. Me, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> and he forgets who he is now. <laughs> um, <laughs> I almost fell asleep there. No offense, but hey. Um, uh, what did I play? Oh, um, that one game, Severed. I played a ton of that. <laughs> and are you enjoying it? Of course. That game is addicting. Um, so I don't know how far exactly I am in the game, but getting a little further in some of the areas and solving some puzzles and what have you. So I, I still need to play a lot more of it. Um, I still feel like I'm very early in the game. So, so yeah, I need to jump more into that. Uh, and then I played a little bit more of, uh, Akiba Strip. Um, that's a, it's an interesting game and... Yeah, I'm a little late to the party, but hey, better late than never, right, Kyle? 
Absolutely. <laughs> that's what's up. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think that's it. I think. There might be something else. Who knows? Buzz Tyler <laughs> might find something else that he played. Like regular Tyler does all the time. <laughs> yeah, like that other Tyler that we know. <laughs> Anyways, let's let's jump into the reviews we've got. Um, we've got a couple here, and hopefully I can read properly. So first up, we've got Letter Quest Remastered. This was reviewed by Jenny. She gave it a 3.9 out of 5 and says, quote, Letter Quest Remastered Grimm's Journey is a really fun blend of side-scrolling puzzle game with RPG elements. It's simple to get into, but will keep you coming back after t- wait, coming back time after time to play one more level and level up your cute little Grim Reaper or try to beat your previous score in endless mode. If you like word games, then you should definitely give Letter Quest a try. End quote. So I haven't played this game myself, um, but it does sound very interesting. What about you, Kyle? Yeah, I haven't played it either, but um, I, I've seen it from putting together some of the trailers we've had up on the uh, Lounge Play channel, and it looks interesting. I don't know if it's something I'd necessarily play, but um, i got to give a kudos to Jenny because in one of her screenshots, she actually got like the Vita, or the word Vita spelled out on the screen, so nice. that, that's some good skills there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't know if I'm interested. It's It's one of those things, you know. I might get stuck into it and play it later on, but not rush into it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, yeah, definitely read the full review for more on that. What do we got next, Kyle? All right. The only other review from the week is One Piece Burning Blood, which was reviewed by Charlie. He also gave it a 3.9 out of 5, and he says, quote, One Piece Burning Blood is a good fighting game that will appeal to fans of the anime while still being simple enough for newcomers to pick up and play. Although the game's story mode is rather short, there is plenty here to keep you entertained and ensure you will be satisfied during your stay in the One Piece world, end quote. So, looks like he enjoyed it, even though, uh, (laughs) from reading the review anyway, it doesn't seem like there's a very cohesive story, but hey, it's a fighting battle game, what do you expect? (laughs) Yeah. All right, so there you go. Those are the reviews. You should definitely check out the site and read up on those to see if those are interesting to you. And, yeah, let's get into uh, the new releases here. we got quite a bit. So first up for North America, we've got Attractio for nine ninety nine, Atelier Sophia and Sophie, and the uh, Alchemist of the Mysterious Book for thirty nine ninety nine. Bard's Gold, which is coming out on the 17th, so that is a third, no, Friday, um, and the price is to be announced. Uh, Odin Sphere, Leaf, 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 say it, Kyle. Leaf Thrissier. That's what I said, for thirty nine ninety nine, and Steam World Heist for nineteen ninety nine. Kyle, what's Europe land getting? All right, Europe got Steamworld Heist for fifteen pounds ninety nine, nineteen euros ninety nine, or twenty nine ninety nine Australian dollars. Atelier Sophie, the Alchemist of the Mysterious Book, with bonus for thirty four pounds ninety nine, thirty nine euros ninety nine, or twenty nine ninety nine Australian dollars. They got Delta Strike First Assault, which is not available in Austria, Belgium, France, Germany, Italy, Lux, Netherlands, Portugal. <laughs> Russia, Spain, Switzerland, and Ukraine. Um, so pretty much most of the places. <laughs> and that's six pounds nineteen to be determined in euros and eleven twenty-five Australian dollars. Then there's Bard's Gold, which comes out on the seventeenth, and that's tomorrow, and that's what price to be determined. And Grand Kingdom also out tomorrow, price to to be determined. Sorry. Yeah, Woo. that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you gonna get in there, Kyle? Uh well, I got Odin Sphere Leaf this year. Uh, that was the big one for me. Um, Attractio looks interesting, but I'm not sure if I'm interested. Um, <laughs> Atelier Sophie is, yeah, not for me. I'm I've never really been into those Atelier games. Um, Bard's Gold. Uh, I need to know more for sure. And Seam World Heist is not for me. So, yeah. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, said Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> Pants on, Tyler. Pants on. 
Uh, yeah, well. Yeah, there's not really anything here that interests me. I, I, don't, I don't really know. I've been... I need, I need to finish some games first, Kyle. Can you stop bothering me with all these other games? <laughs> if you'd actually play some of the games, like, come on. You I should know. have them severed by now and been, like, dancing have. around telling other people how great it is and shit. I'm working on like, it, okay? I'll platinum it by the end of the year. Deal? By the end of the... <laughs> no, by the end of the week, Tyler. Ooh, <laughs> challenge. That's... Wait, the end of the week is coming up. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you till... Monday morning. <laughs> That's terrible. That's totally like a good amount of time. That's the weekend. You should have, you know, eight hours to platinum the game. Yeah. Yeah. Well. That's assuming you're three hours in. <laughs> yeah. And you went at the same speed I did. Yeah. And your assumptions <laughs> should not be assumed. <laughs> <laughs> Do it anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, there's a ton of games coming out, people. So definitely check out that list and see if there's anything for you we've got a lot of news to go through so buzz tyler is going to read them to you <laughs> apologies in advance people <laughs> wow that was rude kyle i i'm doing a great it, job it would have been rude not to apologize tyler <laughs> would it let the people decide okay, okay. all right all right good talk <laughs> anyways the Bandai Namco Entertainment has announced Super Robot Wars V, or 5, for release in Japan and Asia. Coming to Japan and Asia in 2017, Super Robot Wars 5 is set to include a plethora of participating works, including many which are new to the Super Robot series. It'll be hitting Asia with English subtitles, so if battling bots are your thing, then this might be one to watch. Next up. Sega has announced that a Persona 4 Dancing All Night style costume is coming to Project Diva X later this month in Japan. Designed by Atlas Shig Shigenori Sojima, the newly announced Persona 4 Dancing All Night costume module is coming to Hatsune Miku... Hatsune Miku... Hatsune Miku... Project Diva X via the Japanese PlayStation Network. It launches on June 23rd and will be priced at 300 yen. Hat oh man, Hatsune Miku Project Diva X is due out in North America August 30th and is already available in Japan. No word yet on whether the costume will make the way. Well, this is gonna be a long. This is gonna be a long day. Will make the just to the west. That doesn't make sense. I guess it's supposed to be jumped to the west. <laughs> okay, I'm not crazy. I'm like, wait a minute. Am I right? <laughs> All right. Come on, people. you got to write them stories correctly. Uh, you can't do this to the Buzz Tyler. <laughs> Anyways, jump to the west, but I'm sure if it does, we'll hear about it. As for the fate of the game in Europe, in a recent episode of Sega Central, a fan asked the question of if Hatsune Miku Project Diva X would be heading to Europe. The reply from Sega Europe, Community manager Dan Sheridan was, quote, We've heard feedback from Miku fans since the announcement in America, and we're looking into how we could bring Hot Cena Miku Project Diva X to Europe. Stay tuned for updates, end quote. That's it for now, but we'll, sure, we'll be sure to keep an eye out for more information. <gasps> Woo, as usual. <laughs> uh, all right, next up. Uh, Compile Heart has updated its official website for Divine Prison Prison Tower Mary Skelter with a whole load of new information. First up, some more information on the battle system. The protagonist, Jack, will fight alongside a maximum of five girls. All right. From the sh sh Shishiki Girls Squad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Whenever the girls that take heavy damage, they start to accumulate impurities. When good... When Good. When enough impurity has been accumulated, the affected girl will be swallowed by madness and enter blood skelter mode. While in this state, the girl doesn't listen to your instructions. The girl is mad, and you will use her power against friend or foe. To return her to normal, you'll need the power of the Mary Gun. Jack can use the Mary Gun, which shoots bullets of his own blood, to help the sh 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 shiki girls. This blood shot will purify the impurity that builds up inside the girl. Of course, using the gun will cause Jack's blood to decrease, use too much of it, and he's at risk of fainting. As well as using the Mary Gun, Jack can act as a shield to the... or 
for the Shishiki girls. However, this can also make Jack faint. If Jack has fainted, then he can't do anything for a set number of turns until he's recovered. Faint too many times in one battle, and he won't recover until the fight has ended. We've also learned about the Shishiki girls, who are extremely rare young girls born inside the living prison jail. They have physical capabilities which... Mm, mm. They have physical capabilities well beyond that of a normal person, and each has their own unique ability as well. These girls are named for women of fairy tales. However, we haven't yet been told why. On the flip side, the protagonist Jack is one of the very few Shishiki boys, which are even more rare than the female counterparts. Uh, moving on, we've also learned that in order to fight against jail, an organization called the Dawn Liberation Front was formed, and under their umbrella is a team called the Shishiki Girls Squad. Members of the organization tend to wear black and are often seen protecting people from their prison prisons monsters marching. While it's true that the organization rescues a lot of people, their main goal has become to escape jail completely. Speaking of which, Kapala Hart has released information on the living prison, which has been given the imaginative, imaginative name of jail. Jail is hungry for the three great desires appetite, sexual desire, and the desire to sleep. You can help to satisfy these desires but both in battle and when exploring dungeons. Jail will grant you a bonus if you satisfy a desire to the maximum amount. Once a desire has been satisfied, a roulette wheel will appear. The rewards of the wheel will vary depending on if you're exploring the dungeon or in battle. You could get anything from status recovery to the generation of a new dungeon floor. To satisfy appetite, you need to gather the blood of an enemy marching during battle, sexual desire can be satisfied either by licking blood in battle or by finding emotion points in jail's erogenous, erogenous zones. These can be stimulated by touching. Collecting treasure chests and collecting collection points in the dungeon will also increase sexual desire. Occasionally, during the game, jail will suddenly become sleepy and enter jail sleep time. While sleeping, jail's desire for sleep will automatically be satisfied. However, things are not as easy as that. During sleep, your party will take on greater damage. Also, if anyone becomes incapacitated during battles, jail's during battle, jail's sleep will be disrupted and his desire will decrease. Divine Prison Tower Mary Skelter is set to release October 13th in Japan. You made it. <laughs> That's just three. Right. Yeah, I know. I know, but you made it. <laughs> let's, let's go on. <laughs> it appears that a second Criminal Girls game will be making its way west this September, but it won't be making the move without some changes to the content. Dungeon Crawling Rehabilitation title Criminal Girls 2 Party Favors is on its way west thanks to the helpful folks over at NIS America, but the move won't be without a few caveats. Namely, some censorship. In order to make sure the title will attain, or attain sorry, a mature rating in the West, some things had to be altered, including redrawn art for the motivation scenes, terminology changes, no dubbing, and no motivation scene dialogue. More information about just what is being changed is available on the site. Criminal Girls 2 Party, Gr Party Favors is set to release September 20th in North America and September 23rd in Europe. Shantae Half Genie Hero is coming to PlayStation Vita as both a physical and digital version this September. A tweet from WayForward combined with a recent press release from Xseed has given us some new insert insight into how and when this game is coming, but first let's get a refresher on what it's all about, courtesy of Xseed. Quote, In the magical world of Sequin land lives Shantae, a spirited young half genie. She has dedicated her life to defending her home of Scuttletown from evil in all forms and has been called upon again as pirates attack. Using her trademark hair whip attack and special ability to transform herself into various kinds of creatures by way of magical belly dancing, she must fight her way through steamy jungles, ancient ruins, and stormy deserts to topple the villainous barons behind each criminal caper, preparing for the ultimate showdown against her arch nemesis, the bodacious buccaneer risky boots end quote have we tickled your memories with this one have we caught your attention for the first time good because now it's time to lay it down exceed will be publishing a physical version of shanty half genie hero on playstation vita september 27th in north america with a digital version not dated but likely due the same day as its release tuesday 
But that's not all. The game will be released physically as a special Risky Beats retail release, and will be packaged with a CD containing over 20 songs from the game. The suggested retail price for this generously packed physical copy is $29.99, so jump on it. Falcom has unveiled some new screenshots and information about characters and bosses for Ease 8 Lacrimosa of Dana. Cashew is the latest castaway to be introduced. He was a sailor on board the Lombardia passenger liner and has a great deal of respect for its captain, Captain Barbaros. He's a similar age to Adol and got to know Adol and Dogi through their time on the ship when they were working as temporary sailors. He's a hard worker and during the voyage cared for Adol like a brother. Under the sh- er, after the ship sinks, Cashew's whereabouts become unknown. The game will be set on the Isle of Siren, on which there are many large creatures known as Ancients. One of the Ancients that you will get to face is Clarion, who is known as the Hermit of the Silent Forest. Clarion can overwhelm its pl- prey with long, sticky tongue, and can also cause shockwaves by flapping its wings. It has the ability to change its body color to blend in with the background, which can make him particularly tricky to fight. Glassban is known as the ancient ruler of the sky, and is said to live at the large cliff edge at the heart of the Isle of Siren. It can soar through the sky with ease and can burn its opponents with the terrible flames it breathes from its mouth. Glassban also performs direct attacks with its huge winged arms and sharp beak. Its ability to fight both on the ground and at a distance makes it a really dangerous foe. Carveros is known as the guard of the Great Academic Center. It is a guardian who has become part of the wall of the Great Academic Center and keeps intruders at bay. Carveros doesn't move its body, but can unleash a variety of attacks with its extendable hand that protrudes from the wall. On both sides of its head, there are two guard heads that move around to protect it from any physical attack. They can also stop intruders by shooting blast shots and freezing cold beam attacks. That's about all for the game itself right now, but we're happy to announce that a brand new Ease 8 theme is now available on the Japanese PSN. The free basic version of the theme offers a single background, lock screen, and background music track, while the plus exclusion version offers all that plus nine additional background images. You can check it out on the Vita Lounge's Lounge Play channel if you're interested. Ease 8 Lacrimosa of Dana is due out in Japan July 21st. No news yet on a Western release, but hopefully they'll announce something soon. Is it already my turn again? It is, Tyler. Son of a bitch. All right, Final Fantasy fans, grab your gun blades, saddle your chocobos, and polish those material orbs as, a, uh, as I have some news for you. World of Final Fantasy will be released on October 25th in North America and October 28th in Europe. Square Enix also confirmed that players who pre-order World of Final Fantasy will also net themselves a special character summon, the main man himself, Sephiroth. Fuck yeah. I'm down. I gotta pre-order that game, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Gaijin Works, the team responsible for the PSP titles of Class of Heroes 3 and Summon Night 5 Western releases, have released... Uh, revealed that they are working on bringing Summon Night 6 Lost Borders to the West in early 2017. Summon Night 6 is set in a cocoon world named F- 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 Fuluja, which is where Raj and Amu reside with their companions on a small island. Small island. Everything bring everything changes when a meteor falls into f- that place, and ber- and people from Lindbaum begin appearing in this world. You can expect to meet characters from previous games in the series during your adventure. The RPG will, which was the, oh my gosh, sound your words out. The RPG, which was, which released in Japan back in March, will release digitally in Europe with North, Amer- North American PS Vita owners also being treated to physical copies of the game. 2017, mark your calendars. Exceed has been getting their hands on everything lately, and the announcement of their E3 showcase lineup has confirmed even more titles to come our way. The lovely localization bearers over at Exceed and Marvelous USA have taken it upon themselves to make it rain Vita games this week. First, we hear about their publishing, publishing Shantai Half Genie Hero, and now we're hearing about even more titles they've got their hands on. Will it ever stop? We bloody well hope not. 
First up on the announcement block is a game that was actually announced alongside the Shanty News, but was once again affirmed today. Exile's End is coming to PlayStation Vita later this summer. A futuristic side-scroller with a dark tone, Exile's End will uh, have you playing as a lone mercenary, the only one who survived a crash landing on a planet that went dark. Attempting to find out why communication was cut off, you discover the remains of the planet's mining colony, uncovering a truth that no man should have to bear. Next on the announcement schedule is Fate Extella, the Umbral Star, which is headed out our way this winter. The game takes place on the new world of Extella and features a varied cast of servants, ancient warriors of honor who survived the Holy Grail War of the Moon. Now the Moon Cell automa Automation is running the game, however. They must battle in a digital realm called Seraph... Seraph... Attempting to take back what they've lost. According to the press release, quote, players will experience the story from the independent perspective of the, th of the three heroines, servants, and face off against foes from a variety of Fate productions, including characters from Fate, Stay Night, Fate Ap Ap Apocrypha, and Fate Grand Order in fast-paced action. A new form change battle mechanic debuts in this entry to match its series, f series first gameplay style, transforming the player-controlled servants and granting them considerable powers that allow them to devastate enemies and take formidable challenges head-on, end quote. Last but not least, it is, is the announcement that they are very recently announced Akiba's Beat is coming west this winter. The uh, successor to Akiba's Strip, Akiba's Beat has you in the familiar local locale of uh, Akihabara once more, but with the twist. This time, the delusions of the world have warped certain areas of the district into strange dungeons that the protagonist and his friends must fight against. As the only one able to sense the delusions, they have to be the ones to fight back. Um, <clears throat> that's all for now. I think that's a great set of additions to the Western lineup. Exceed always seems to put up, wait, pick up games as Western us Westerners would love to play, and I think once again they've outdone themselves. Bravo! All right, moving on. We heard it was in development way back when, and then we got a hint at a big launch window, but now the latest issue of Famitsu has revealed some solid detail on their upcoming sequel of Demon Gaze, including a release window of this fall. It's official, Demon Gaze 2 will hit the Japanese region this fall according to the latest issue of Famitsu and their recent online preview. But what is Demon Gaze 2 and why should you care? Well, let's dig in, because there's actually quite a bit of information with this reveal. The story follows the Asteria Revolutionary Party, which is established by the protagonist, er, yeah, by the protagonist and company, after they suspect the city-state's leader and the disappearance of their foster mother. Something happens because of this, and the grand story hidden underneath this seemingly simple loss begins to unfold. As for the setting, Demon Gaze 2 takes place several years after the first Demon Gaze, and a new generation of demons have come into existence. These new demons bear the names of constellations and take on the forms of both humans and demons. Things are a bit different now, however, as these demons don't simply exist as summons. They'll actually fight alongside you in battle as partners. They also don't come in the same forms as the first game, with new demons like the Songstress introduced into the world. The locale is announced as Asteria, the same world as the first game. The city-state is surrounded by the ocean, but because of the success of the Inn Tavern, Stella's Place, has been able to, been, er, to develop rapidly, sorry. The demon gazer of this new title is a young man named Signa, who gained his evil eye power by trading away his memories. Signa was raised with a bunch of other children in an orphanage, the one from which the foster mom I mentioned earlier was taken. He's the leader of the ARP and the one in charge of going after the city-state's leader. Alongside Signa is Muse, the manager of Stella's place, and Signa's childhood friend. She's considered the young leader of the Revolutionary Party and seems to be Signa's second in command. Other announcements regarding the sequel include the return of both Promyth and Castle from the original Demon Gaze, as well as the return of popular systems like Treasure Hunting Circles and Autopilot. Demon Gaze 2 is set to hit Japan this fall, who's hoping for a Western localization. Next up, the roguelike RPG Tuhu Genso Wanderer, known in Japan as Mystery Genso Go, the Tower of Desire, will be heading to the West in 2017, 
courtesy of NIS America. For those not in the know, Tuhu Genso Wanderer sees you take control of Raimu, the Hakurai Shrine Maiden, who is investigating the latest incident to, to take place in Gensokyo. Similar to other RPGs, along the way you'll encounter an array of different characters, lots of loot to use in the game's item fusion system, and make battle with your favorite Tuhu girl accompanying you. The story begins when Raimu Hakurai is visiting Rinosuke Morichika at his shop, Corindo. For reasons unknown at this stage, he shows her his most prized possession, a golden sphere. But when Raimu touches the sphere, a mysterious beam of light emerges. A number of peculiar events happen at this point, including Rinosuke acting strange and a giant tower now standing where the shop used to be. Perhaps the most discouraging part of all this happens is that the inhabitants of Ginsokyo have now been replaced by clones who attack people on site. That sounds pretty weird. <laughs> of course, as, as the Tuho Genzo wanderer, it's up to Raimu to save the day and restore peace to the town. She isn't alone, though, as she's joined by Fudo Mononobe, who has recently set out on a quest to become a first-class sage. With her partner, will she be able to make her way through the tower to put an end to this madness? To Who Against the Wanderer is set to release on PlayStation Vita in North America and Europe in early 2017. Marvelous Inc. has revealed some new information about the upcoming Japanese release of Fate Stella, including new information on the characters, gameplay systems, and limited editions planned. The first new information we've got to go through is regarding the characters, of which Artoria, Pendragon, Gilgamesh, and Mumai have been detailed further. Let's run them down. Artoria is a knight that supervises the Knights of the Round Table. She is a king given the title by a dragon to protect Britain. With advanced combat capabilities due to vast amounts of magic power, a single blow from her is the same as getting hit by a god. Her character class is Saber, and her noble phantasm is the Sword of Promised Victory, Excalibur. Gilgamesh is a hero of a Mesopotamian mythology, calling himself the oldest king of heroes. In fact, he is the oldest in human history, the king who became a legend. Taking in the blood of a god, he once lived among the people, but now specializes in the killing of heroes. His class is Archer, and his noble phantasm is the star of creation that split heaven and earth, Enuma Elish. Mumai is a sturdy person dressed in a red cloak. A cool-headed cynic, he's very caring despite his exterior, but don't take that to mean he can't handle himself. Despite not having a powerful noble phantom, and being an archer, he's also proficient in hand-to-hand -hand combat and can handle anything in his way. His class, as mentioned, is Archer, and his noble phantasm is Infinite Creation of Swords, Unlimited Blade Works. So those are the introduced characters, but that's certainly not all the news we've gathered, as we've got new details on the game's systems, including high-speed servant action, area supremacy battle, extella maneuver, and data share. Fate Extella features a system which allows players to move about freely on the battlefield while controlling a servant, all while triggering a variety of combo attacks. The battlefield isn't just limited to the ground either, as players can launch aerial dashes and other airborne attacks, no, as well as guards. Sorry. Looking to an area supremacy battle, they see servants attacking camps known as sectors. The area battle to win regime matrix keys, which indicate control of an area. Winning will take 15 regime mattresses, but each sector has a varying amount of keys, so you won't need them all. It's also important to think of strategy when dealing with the enemy, as things like prioritizing attacks on a sector with more keys, as well as pro protecting a sector you own from the enemy are also important, not just fighting mindlessly. Moving on, we get information on the Extella Maneuver, a special attack that's triggered by filling and then consuming a gauge. It's an area attack which can collectively damage those surrounding the targeted enemy when it strikes. If you so choose, you can initiate a continuous Extella Maneuver as well, though it will require consuming more of the gauge. Lastly, with regards to the system anyways, we get news on data share functions, which allow you to cross save with the PlayStation 4 as well as exchange profile cards via PlayStation Vita. The collected profile cards can enable 
Additional items for use in the PlayStation 4 version via save transfer, giving you a reason to get both versions instead of just the Vita one, right guys? Aside from in-game details, Marvelous Inc. also revealed the limited edition versions of the game, which are laid out in the following with regards to Vita. Regalia box for Vita, er, 8,980 yen, contains a copy of Fate Extella for PlayStation Vita, Aruko Water Drawn Special Box, Gilgamesh Cold Hearted Bloodless Warden Costume Product Code, and Fate Extella Material, a supplementary book featuring Fate Extella character creations and a Kanoko Nasu written terminology dictionary. That said, the Cold Hearted Bloodless Warden costume will apparently be getting a change as the result of, quote, various reasons, end quote, which totally don't include the fact that it looks too Nazi-like at all. <laughs> Moving on, those who want the game on both PlayStation Vita and PlayStation 4 can grab the Velber Box Double Pack, 19,990 yen, which has everything from the Regalia Box Plus, a copy of Fate Excel for PlayStation 4, Saber Bride Opai Mosepad, and Nero Claudius Shackling Wedding Dress Costume Product Code. That's right, you can get both versions in one pack. Fate Extella is set to release November 10th in Japan, and those limited editions are too much, you can always pick up the standard edition for 6,980 yen. Then there's the localization recently announced, but that's another story. Is it my turn? <laughs> and he makes up. <laughs> I did it wrong. Whoops. All right. <laughs> uh, so the rest might be fucked. All right. Here we go. European Vita owners have some wonderful archery-based battling to look forward to as it was recently announced that critically acclaimed indie gem Towerfall Ascension will finally be making its way to Europe Vita's, European Vita's this month. After releasing on North American Vita's in December of last year, it was starting to look a little bit unsure whether the European version would ever see the light of day. Excuse me. However, Matt Thorson of Matt, Matt Makes Games uh, re- relieved anyone of any worries they may have had in a tweet which confirmed that Europeans only have a matter of days to wait until they can get their hands on Towerfall Ascension. Uh, at more, Matt Thorson said, quote, Towerfall Vita finally has a release date in Europe, June 16th. That's tomorrow. We also have some other Towerfall-related stuff in the works for that day, end quote. This is the fantastic news that European fans have been eager to hear for a while now, especially as we give the game a very favorable review in which Brad Grootsmacher described Towerfall Ascension as, quote, multiplayer madness at its finest, finest, end quote, before saying that, quote, the game's simple single-screen arcade combat allows for new and experienced players alike to quickly start up and let the fun begin. It's fast, fluid, and fun, end quote. If, that's, if that isn't ringing if that isn't a ringing endorsement, I don't know what is. So, my European brethren, will you be picking up Towerfall Ascension when it releases, or has the ship already sailed for you? We'd love to hear from you in the comments below and on Twitter. So, hit us up on Twitter. And as always, keep it locked here at the Vita Lounge. Towerfall Ascension releases in Europe on PlayStation Vita on June 16th, 2016. The official website for. Genke Toki 7 Pirates, the upcoming pirate-themed RPG, has been updated with some further information regarding the game and some of its features. The first piece of info is in regards to Otan, which, uh, who we introduced back in April. He is a veteran pirate monster kid and also serves as, a, as your mascot and guide. He rather strangely wears a bra as an eye patch as well. You'll be able to ride on his back through the game, allowing you to reach areas you otherwise wouldn't have been able to get to. A status exclusive to Otan is called BP, bin bin, meaning hard. When enough BP has been gained, Odon can use his special attack called the Odon Cannon. BP is gained by issuing him commands. The multiplier MP in the game has isn't your standard one, with the M standing for Mura Mura, which means to be turned on. Though similar to other games in the genre, the more damage you inflict and take, the higher your MP gets. When you re- reach a certain level, you enter a enchanted state, which allows you to your which allows all your stats to increase. After this stage, you could even reach an excited state, which further increases your abilities. When in the in- when in the excited state, you can perform a powerful special attack, which will send your MP back to zero. Another new system for the Genki Toki Seven Pirates is Egg Hatch, which is where eggs from strange monsters will you encounter will contain items you could come in which 
will contain items that could come in handy. Which brings us to the chest growth system. If you missed it, we previously gave you all the details you could possibly want to know about this gameplay element, but the only way to open the eggs in is through the chest growth system, which allows you to which will allow you to stimulate them. The greater your chest, the easier it will be to crack open the eggs. Be warned though, some of these eggs will contain useless junk. Genki bunk Genki Toki 7 Pirates certainly is shaping out to be an odd game, but you can bet TVL will bring you all the latest details as we head towards its 4th August release date. Bandai Namco has revealed some more information for the highly anticipated Sword Art Online hollow realization, including conf confirmation of two returning characters. Both Agile and Klein, former Sword Art Online players, will join Kirito in this new adventure and will be available in the Town of Beginnings for hire as NPCs. There are over 300 NPCs in the game, and players are able to create special bonds with them and offer them equipment. Obviously, this is impossible to do this to any significant degree with all of them, so you have to pick your NPC partners carefully, as the closer you become, the stronger they'll get because of it. You do want a strong party, don't you? Bandai Namco also announced some online details, including the fact that players will be able to enter raids and fight ba boss battles with other, with both NPCs and other online players. They also said that we'd be playing in a wider world than we saw in the other games, with monsters not yet seen in the series like Shadow Demons and Skeletons. Sword Art Online Hollow Realization is set to be released October 27th in Japan and this fall in the West. As for more news, we hear there's a Nico Nico event on the 27th of this month, That'll shed more light on the game, so stay tuned. All right, kicking on. If you've been looking to get your hands on the latest from or the latest from the physical brewing game lovers over at Limited Run Games, we've got the dates and times you'll need to do it. According to the Limited Run Games website, Octodad Dadliest Catch, Co Drifter, and Soldner X2 Final Prototype are all headed to the PlayStation Vita catalog in the next month and a bit, and we've got the load on load down on exactly when. You're drunk, I can't speak. <laughs> Any, <laughs> anywho, moving on. Octodad Deadliest Catch is 3,500 copies total, and will go live on June 19th at 7 a.m. Pacific and 3 p.m. Pacific. Look that up, translate it into your own time. It goes live for $24.99, check it out. Zeo Drifter, with 2,300 copies total, Goes live on July 4th at 7 a.m. and 3 p.m. Pacific. Check those out times, or check those times for your local region, sorry. And again, $24.99. And Soldner X2 Final Prototype, 3,200 copies total on Vita. And that goes live on July 18th at 7 a.m. and 3 p.m. Pacific. Check your local times, $24.99. Each release has two times listed, as there will be two separate releases of the stock to better make sure everyone who wants one gets one. As usual, we expect limited run games will be coming through the orders for those who try to hog or resell copies off the hop, so there might even be a third. Either way, however, there will be three new limited edition physical games coming in the next 40 days. Can your wallet handle it? NIS America has reached out to those who ordered a physical copy of Grand Kingdom with a disappointing bit of news. According to an email received by a writer friend of mine named Nick, it looks like Grand Kingdom's physical release has been delayed by a week in North America, with the digital release and the European release still on track as previously planned. According to the email, the release date delay for all physical editions in North America is due to a mix-up in our parking or er, packing sorry, facility, which requires disassembling and reassembling the product. This delay will allow us to ensure that all customers receive the product they ordered and not an incorrect product. We understand the delay is disappointing news, particularly this close to release, and would like to sincerely apologize for the extended wait. To help make sure you do not miss out on our launch DLC, we'll, we will be extending this one-time free download period for the launch day Lord Set DLC until July 28th in North America. We'll be sure to keep you updated if any additional changes occur. So North American physical delayed, everything else still the same, and launch DLC extended so you don't miss it. But that's not all. Clocking in at around a gigabyte and a half, the new Grand Kingdom Lite demo is now available. It looks to give you a taste of the game and will allow you to transfer that taste over to the full game when it releases. 
It's compatible with both PlayStation Vita and PlayStation TV, so everyone can join the preview. Grand Kingdom releases June 17th in Europe and June 21st in North America, but you can grab that demo now and North American physical releases a week later than planned. Thanks to the latest edition of Dengeki PlayStation, we now have some details on characters Ilmeria and Levi from Atelier Fearis, the Alchemist of the Mysterious Journey. Ilmeria von Leinweiber <laughs> is a young girl who aims to become a great alchemist. She's a rival to Ferris. She's a hardworking person, but at times she's also selfish, like a child, and she hates to lose. Levi Belger is a wandering swordsman who's traveling across various lands in order to seek out better weapons and also to get stronger. While he looks somewhat mysterious and scary, he's actually very family-oriented and excels at household chores. At times, he's known to be fairly absent-minded. Atelier Ferris, the alchemist of the mysterious journey, is due on Japan in autumn 2016. We're still waiting to hear news on a Western release, but we're sure there's going to be one. <laughs> Is it my turn? Yep. <laughs> what? Where am I? Oh, God, this is bad. Uh. Uh. Where did it go? Studio? <laughs> I had it set up. There we go. All right. Micro <laughs> Studio Pixel Lantern is bringing Bard's Gold to PlayStation Vita, Vita this week, and we've got the details on just what you can expect. Pixel Lantern's Erdem Half, the studio consisting of Erdem and his wife, took to the PlayStation blog this week to introduce Bard's Gold, which is set to hit the PlayStation Network this Friday. A platformer meant to feel like, not just look like, old school hard games, Bard's Gold brings the Back the challenge and no hand holding of your. You are completely on your own for more than 100 handcrafted levels, which are picked randomly for each playthrough. Your only salvation is a permanent upgrade system, which will allow you to slowly build up your abilities. Bard's Gold releases June 17th in North America and Europe, with cross buy support between PlayStation Vita and PS4. The developer team behind that limited physical release company we all know and love is now helping Sakaya Project get more games onto Unity and, by extension, Vita. So first of all, Mighty Rabbit Studios has announced that they're pairing up with the localization team Sakai Project to port games from one of the most used visual novel engines to Unity. Here's the tweet, quote, At the Mighty Rabbit said, We're working with at Sakai Project to bring RenPy to Unity and, by extension, every console under the sun, uh, Vita, PS4, Xbox, Wii U, and 3DS. End quote. Great news, right? Making it so games made in RenPy can be easily moved to Unity means that Sakai Project and likely others will be able to bring more visual novel titles to platforms which support the ambiguous engine. Many visual novels run on RenPy, so it would certainly go a long way towards getting some of those Sakai Project titles we've already been promised into our hands. Plus, being that Mighty Rabbit is also behind limited run games, it's also possible we'll see some physically. Koei Tecmo has announced Berserk for both Japanese and Western markets. Berserk tentative title has been announced as a Mizu Muzo style ad adaptation of the fantasy manga series, which follows two men in their in their very opposite oppositely fueled struggles to find their purpose. One man takes the fight for survival route while the other hungers for power. It'll it'll be coming to the PlayStation Vita this year in Japan with a Western release planned but not detailed. Are you interested in Berserk? So is the person that posted this. So they'll be sure Me. to keep you... Oh, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be sure to keep you informed as this bit of news develops further. All right, kicking on some more Demon Gaze 2 news. Demon Gaze 2 has finally been given a release date in Japan. And a follow-up to everything we have covered concerning exactly what Demon Gaze 2 is to roughly when we can expect it, we can now share with you the exact release date the title will be launching on Eastern Shores. Katokawa Games announced at their summer press conference that Demon Gaze 2 will not only be unleashed upon the Japanese public in the later half of the year, but those people lucky enough to have pre-ordered the game will also have a Best of Demon Gaze music selection soundtrack included in their purchase. The CD will include music from Demon Gaze and Demon Gaze 2. Nice. Now all we need is localization for us Western demons. 
Yay. Demon Gaze 2 will launch for PlayStation Vita in Japan on October 13th, priced at 6,300 yen. Now you can, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right, moving on. Katakawa Games has finally given Project Code Dayton, a dungeon-crawling RPG, a Japanese release window, and its newest lineup trailer. Themed around the Cthulhu mythos, Project Code Dayton was originally announced back in 2014, but is only now getting mentioned once again. This time, however, it looks like they've learned it's coming out in 2017, as that's what Katakawa Games' lineup trailer seems to point out. Project Code Dayton is now set to hit Japan in 2017. Are you getting as curious as I am? <laughs> and we've long known that Root Letter was destined for Japan and the West in 2016, but we now finally know who will be bringing it to our neck of the woods. Katakawa Games, again, has announced that Pewcube has obtained the publishing rights to Root Letter in North America and Europe, with SIEJA, Sony Interactive Entertainment Japan and Asia, taking the reins in Asian territories, and Shinsekai taking the duty in Korea. The game's out in the West this year, so that leaves just over six months to get ready. Start saving those pennies, Vita fans. 5BP has announced a delay for their upcoming adventure game, which is based on an anime of the same name. My teen romantic comedy Snafu 2 has been officially delayed from its July 28th release date by pub publisher 5BP, the new release date becoming a much later October 27th. That's a day shy of being delayed three months and means 90, 90 or so more days of no snafu for you. As for the reason behind the delay, the usual various reasons excuse was used, meaning we're in the dark about a what, why as well. My teen romantic comedy Snafu 2 is now set to launch October 27th in Japan. Yo, yo no ig you know, a girl who chants love at the bound of this world has been given a release date pricing and limited edition details by publisher 5BP. While it's bad news for some, it seems like that's not all 5BP has to offer this week. They've now detail or dated and detailed the release of You Know, a girl who chants love at the bound of this world, their visual novel remake. It looks like they'll be getting our hands on this one November 17th in Japan with a price of 7,000 yen for the digital download and 7,800 yen for the retail physical version. That's not all, however. There's also there as mm, there'll also be a limited edition physical release, which will include a five-disc soundtrack DVD, an 80-page perfect guide featuring setting and character art, route notes for all the heroines, and music liner notes from the game's music leads. R I'm not gonna read those names. It'll be priced at 11,000 yen. You know, a girl who chants love at the bound of this world is due out on November 17th in Japan. Square Enix has announced the North American and European release dates for the recently announced localization of Dragon Quest Builders. While we were only recently introduced to the idea of Dragon Quest Builders actually coming west, it seems like Square Enix is biding its time no longer. In a pre press conference today, they've locked in release dates of October 11th in North America and October 14th in Japan. Are you in or what? And that is the news. And Tyler's drunk because he said October 14th in Japan and it's October 14th in Europe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's the news. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> My bad. We make yeah, mistakes. Yeah, you're bad, Tyler. <laughs> I'm, uh... You did good, though. I I think I did a good job. <laughs> you you mostly got through it with the trouble. That's good. I had some trouble though too, so ha -ha. shit happens. <laughs> Who's the drunk one now? <laughs> hey, I admit it, Tyler. Okay. <laughs> All right, so moving on to talking points, we have announced a release games we're looking forward to from the week. So from that twenty seven odd things, what looks good to you, Tyler? Hmm. I was supposed to pay attention. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pay attention now. Just look at the list of links, and you should be able to tell. Um, Sword Art Online Hollow Realization, yes. Uh, Dragon Quest Builders, yes. Um, Ease Eight, yes. And that's uh, all I can see right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I've got quite a few more than that. Do it. Uh, I'm getting interested in that Mary Skelter game. That sounds very interesting, so I'm keeping an eye on that. 
We've also got Ease 8, of course. Can't can't keep that out. <laughs> <laughs> um, then we've got Akiba's Beat, which is coming west, and Fate Extella, which is also coming west, and Demon Gaze 2, even though I have to play one still. Uh, what else do we have here? Sword Art Online, Hollow Realization, for sure. Um, <laughs> there's at least one more. Come on here. Oh, Berserk. I'm looking forward to Berserk, too. And, of course, uh, the news uh, with regard to Sakai Project stuff coming over, which we've got a little bit more since this list has been compiled. So I'll, I'll kind of spoil it for next week. Fault Milestone 1 and uh, uh, Rabbi Ribby, something like that, are coming. But Fault Milestone 1 is the visual novel, so Mighty Rabbit's taking the helm for that porting job. And uh, hopefully we'll get it soon. <laughs> so that's interesting to me. So, yeah. Lots of good stuff. <laughs> nice. Yeah. All right. So that's enough about that. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Uh, we have the PlayStation Store top downloads for May 2016. So let's... No introduction here. We're just going to go through them. It's kind of a wonky list. Here we go. North America, top 10. Number one is Killzone Mercenary. Number two is Severed. Number three is Little Big Planet. Number four is Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth. Number five is Freedom Wars. Number six is Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z. Number seven is Hitman Go Definitive Edition. Number eight is Minecraft. Number nine is Terraria. And number 10 is PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. In Europe, their top 10 is... Number one is Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories PSP. Number two is Need for Speed Most Wanted. Number three is the Ratchet and Clank Trilogy. Number four is GTA Liberty City Stories PSP. Number five is Persona 4 Golden. Number six is Tabletop Racing. Number seven is God of War Collection. Number eight is Gravity Rush. Number nine is Minecraft. And number ten is Severed. So, Severed hangs on, but other than that, a lot of sales stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any of those stand out to you other than those PSP titles which keep creeping back up on the list? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's it's nice to see Severed up there, right? It's a game everyone kind of seemed like, why is, why is, uh, fuck, what's their name? Drinkbox Studios making a touch-based game, right? But hey, <laughs> look at it. Well, now they've just announced that they're bringing it to Wii U, 3DS, and iOS, I think. So that's why they're making it. <laughs> well, shh, Kyle. They don't need to know that. <laughs> well, you got to play it on Vita anyway. It's best on Vita. There that's you go. Right. <laughs> Even though those other versions aren't out, and I can't really say that. But, you know, Vita. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's good, right? Yeah. I think so. All right. So that's our talking points for the week, I think. <laughs> let's move on to our listener mail and we've got two here it looks like um i'll read them since tyler's inebriated uh Thank the first you. one is from shuet's purser <laughs> at kmac8 and they ask are you guys gonna pick up the god eater games on vita would love to play with you guys love the show what are you doing tyler you getting yes. god eater yes i am mm, there you go don't even tyler's kid yourself <laughs> Tyler's getting it. I'm probably getting it, though I don't know if I'll be getting it day one. That depends. Kyle, get it day one. Money, Tyler. Kyle, <laughs> get the money day one. <laughs> That's how it works, right? Uh, I guess. All I don't right. know. <laughs> Look, you heard it here first, people. <laughs> He's getting the money day one. Ah, Tyler, Tyler, Tyler. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. We've got another question, and it's from Jeff at Prototype0115. Those numbers are actual numbers. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Do you believe there will be a successor to the Vita? So we've answered this a couple times before, but it's been spread out. So, you know, thoughts may have changed. And Tyler's obviously not in his right mind, so let's see what he says. <laughs> All right. So... You've got Sony. They make PlayStation. <laughs> Do I think they're going to make a second Vita? No. I think if they're going to make a second handheld, they're not going to call it the Vita. It's going to be something new. And they're going to restart. But I don't know if they're going to do it. So that's a very vague answer. So, Kyle, take it away. 
Yeah, I'm kind of with you. I don't think there's necessarily going to be something called Vita 2 or a direct, you know, successor. Um, but at the same po- at the same time, I think that eventually all consoles are going to go portable in some way. So I think there will be something that will be considered maybe kind of the successor to Vita, but there's not going to be a Vita 2. <laughs> yeah. That's just my guess. Yeah. Even Loopy Tyler can figure that out. Boom. Told. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I think that's it for questions, unless you got something that I didn't, Tyler. Um, no, that's, uh, that's how the cookie crumbles. All right, so we're on to you for Fuck. your pick of the week. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is not good. I, I don't even what have What are you my, picking, Tyler? Hurry I, up. <laughs> I don't even have my Vita on me right now. I can't even look at the store. Um, so... There's there's a guy, he walks into a bar. And then he says, ouch? Yeah. Why'd you ruin the joke? Because I'm trying to make time go faster so that you have to do more stuff. <laughs> You're the worst. I know. You really are the worst, Kyle. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's rude. <laughs> so that's not like you because... <laughs> Come on now. Let's not get mean. Okay? <laughs> Truthful, Tyler, not mean. <laughs> True. But still. <laughs> so uh, have you found something yet? Come on. I am still delaying, and you're doing a terrible job at helping stalling me. forever, Tyler. <laughs> you I want have... me to Jeopardy music this bitch? I mean, you could, or I could just talk much slower. <laughs> You're already talking slow and slurring enough, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the sales here are terrible. So, I'm gonna say, save your money this week and oh, get Persona Four. <laughs> 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 oh man! Because <laughs> there's some good games coming. Is that a good enough answer? I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't make the rules here, Tyler. Well, neither do I. But Well, they, there you go. That's what Tyler says. If you don't like it, send him the hate mail. <laughs> yes, it's Kyle Wakeling at theviewlounge.net. Right? <laughs> just just no. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, there you go. I think that's it for us, right? It is. Do you want to do the outro? I don't. <laughs> All right. I'll do it, you asshole. If you've got listener mail or comments, contact us via media services at thevitalounge.net. You can find everything we talked about today at thevitalounge.net, including any mentioned news, reviews, featured articles, and store updates. We also have a community forum and a magazine. The magazine is available both digitally and in a physical format via patreon.com slash thevitalounge. You can follow us on Twitter at the Vita Lounge, I'm at Mr. PS Vita Reviews. Kyle is at Teflon Tactics. We're also on Facebook. Just search the Vita Lounge. And you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash loungeplay. Kyle's posting tons of videos up there, so get on that. Subscribe to it. This podcast is available on Google Play, iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, YouTube, and via direct download on the site. So get on it. Subscribe, rate us, let us know how we're doing. And that is it. I'm buzzed. I need to go to sleep. <laughs> Dream of boobs, Nah, when don't I? <laughs> Good man. Oh, right. City's That's breaking it. down on a camel's back. City's breaking down. City's breaking down. <laughs> windmill, windmill for the land. Turn forever hand in hand. Take it all in on your stride. It's sinking, falling down. Love forever. Forever you and me Windmill, windmill for the land is every 
Laughing gas, he's hazmat, fast cats Lining them up like ass cracks Lay these ponies at the track It's my chocolate attack Shit, I'm stepping in the heart of this year Care Bear ripping it harder this year Watch me as I gravitate Ha, 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 yo We gonna ghost town this Motown With your sound, you're in the blink Gonna bite the dust, can't fight with us With your sound, you kill the ink So don't stop, get it, get it Until you change ahead and watch the way I navigate ha 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 so feel good feel good feel good feel good baby feel good feel good feel good I want you to feel real don't stop shit get it we are your captains and steady watch me navigate ha 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 so don't stop shit get it we are your captains and steady watch me navigate ha 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 City's breaking down on a camel's back City's breaking down on a camel's back City's breaking down on a camel's back City's breaking down, city's breaking down